All right, folks. Back to a little bit more investigation with the voodoo man. Schottenjager. Have you ever heard of a Schottenjager? No, I have not. Ah, uh, you're useless. Tell me about yourself. Me? Yes, if you don't mind. What is it you wish to learn? Uh... Why don't you open a voodoo museum? The subject has fascinated me all my life, and I wanted to help preserve the cultural heritage it represents. What kind of background in voodoo do you have? Let us say that I cut my teeth on it, Mr. Knight. It is in my blood. He's a snake! Do you do anything besides run the museum? I want my crown. The museum does not make me a rich man, but my material needs are simple. I prefer to focus on my one true interest in life. What are your own religious beliefs? My beliefs are too personal and too complex to discuss with a layman, Mr. Knight. Hey! Just tell me. I am originally from the West Indies myself, you know. Really? What brought you to New Orleans? I was drawn here for personal reasons. Hey, Ben. Uh... Tell me about historical voodoo. Very well. I will start at the beginning, Mr. Knight. This could be a little while, though. There at your prompting. Sounds good. As you may know, voodoo is a grassroots religion formed by the mixing together of many different African tribal religions and Anglo religions, such as Catholicism or Protestantism. In other words, it is a religion born of the African slave trade, but African slaves were imported not only by the United States, but also into the West Indies where the French and Spanish ran plantation islands. Prior to 1803, the New Orleans area was owned by France. The French Creole in those days owned many African slaves. But the Creole did not permit their slaves to gather, giving no chance for voodoo to breed here natively. The Creole also knew enough about the corrupted pagan practices of the West Indies slaves to ban the importing of slaves from that region. So, how did Voodoo come to New Orleans? After the Louisiana Purchase, American legislators relaxed regulations. Slaves were permitted to gather. The Americans also removed the ban on West Indies slaves. Around the same time, a slave revolt occurred in Santo Domingo, what is now Haiti. Between the lifting of the ban and the Haitian revolt, West Indies slaves began pouring Orleans. Some of them were free people of color, freed or escaped slaves. Some came with their white owners who were fleeing from the revolt. Yeah, folks, uh, it's going to be a talky video. So if you know the storyline, you could skip it. I actually kind of find this stuff interesting. So what happened when the West Indies I'm going to keep listening to it. They brought voodoo with them. The native slaves were more than enthusiastic about embracing it. It gave them power, Mr. Knight, if only in the form of a communal bond. Among the first meeting places were the Bayou Saint John and the shore of Lake Pontchartre. The early voodoos were heavy snake worshippers, worshipping the one they called the Great Zombie. Tell me more about historical voodoo. By 1817, the voodoo activities were beginning to cause fear among the white slave owners. An ordinance was passed to forbid slave gatherings except in designated public areas at designated times. The time was Sunday afternoons and the place, Congo Square. The slaves and free people of color gathered to dance simulations of their voodoo dances right in sight of Creole society. Of course, they also continued to meet in private for the real thing. Huh. Tell me more about historical voodoo. There were a variety of kings and queens at first. Voodoo priests. 
priests and priestesses. But from about 1830, a single power emerged. This was a voodoo queen named Marie Laveau. Marie Laveau ruled voodoo in New Orleans for many years. Aha! Tell me more about Marie Laveau. Marie Laveau. There were actually two Marie Laveaus, mother and daughter. Most people thought they were the same woman. Her continued youth added to the mystique. The original, the mother, was also known as Widow Paris. It was she that began the empire. When the Widow Paris began to practice, there were many Voodooans in the city. Oh. By eight Folks, sorry for that little interruption there. I had someone uh, enter the building unexpectedly. Gonna hear a beep soon. There we go. There goes the sound. Didn't expect anyone to come into the building at uh, a little after midnight, but... Tell me more about historical voodoo. I've given you... Alright. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. The Widow Paris was a hairdresser for rich Creole ladies. She also paid household servants to spy for her. Between the two, she knew everything about everyone who mattered in New Orleans. She was not above using her information to appear psychic, to intimidate, or even to blackmail. You sound as though you admire her. For a black woman in the mid-1800s to gain power is an incredible thing, Mr. Knight. However, she achieved it. Huh. Tell me more. She kept a pet snake, danced with it too. She held traditional voodoo ceremonies out by the lake. She took herself seriously. Very seriously. But she was not above selling tickets for her events to curiosity seekers. She was not above using voodoo any way she could to make money, that is for certain. But, if she had been in another line of work, in another age, that would have been interpreted as entrepreneurial genius rather than a sign of fraudulence. Hey, you don't need to convince me. I admire anyone that can actually make a living. What was that? Make a living. <laughs> the hell? Tell me it was Marie Laveau who defined the voodoo that is truly and uniquely the voodoo of New Orleans. She invented hundreds, if not thousands of spells, potions, charms, and incantations. These form the basis of the modern practice, not to mention the folk tradition of voodoo. Voodoo? the hell is hoodoo? Alright. Well, we got Tell time for one more. About Marie Laveau. Her daughter, Marie Glapion, took over when the widow Paris got old. Most people thought it was the same Marie Laveau. Both Maries encouraged that point of view. The widow Paris died in 1881. Marie Glapion had been reigning a long time by then. After the death of the Widow Paris, other voodoo queens surfaced, and by 1890, the cult was fragmented again. Marie Glapion just sort of faded away. Alright folks, I'm going to get the video off here. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I do apologize for that interruption. So, I hope you continue to watch the other ones, and thanks for watching.